Good afternoon, my friends. I'm Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age magazine. And when it comes to that dreaded P0420 or P0430 or both, there's one of two certainties present. Either replacement of that catalytic converter is going to fix the problem or it's not. How confident are you in your diagnostic abilities for catalytic converter functionality? Stick with me in this episode of The Trainer and find out how to be more accurate. When it comes to catalytic converter functionality, most technicians truly don't understand what happens inside that catalytic converter. And it leaves them with fear and anxiety when it comes time to making a diagnostic decision on whether or not to replace, many times, the very expensive catalytic converter. A catalytic converter functions off of chemistry. There are three dangerous gases that the internal combustion engine emits during its operation. One being hydrocarbon, which is unburnt fuel. Two being carbon monoxide, which is a dangerous gas that occurs during the combustion process when a rich mixture is present, meaning in abundance of fuel. Carbon monoxide gets worse the richer that air-fuel mixture becomes. And last but not least, probably the most dangerous gas of the three is oxides of nitrogen. Like carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen are present during the combustion process. However, oxide of nitrogen production gets out of control when internal temperatures exceed 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. So regarding the standards set forth by the Clean Air Act and our OBD2 emissions program, it's the manufacturer's responsibility to ensure hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, and oxides of nitrogen production are kept under control. And that's accomplished through the functionality of the computerized fuel injection system when coupled to the catalytic converter. The catalytic converter functions off of chemistry. That's right, a chemical reaction takes place inside it. And the job of that catalytic converter, when it's functioning properly, is to chemically convert hydrocarbons into H2O, which is water, carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, which is a harmless gas, and oxides of nitrogen will get disassociated or separated into nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen being an inert gas, comprising our atmosphere up to 78% of the air we breathe, and oxygen, that's a no-brainer. As mentioned earlier, the catalytic converter is a device that functions off of chemistry. In the front of the cat is a section known as the reduction section. And by reduction, I mean it's meant to reduce the amount of oxides of nitrogen. So how do we go about doing that? Take a look right here. This simple cartoon drawing represents a lumberjack swinging an axe towards a tree. Now, no matter how big and strong that lumberjack is, he's not going to chop that tree down with his bare hands. And no matter how sharp that axe is, that axe is not going to swing itself. It takes the lumberjack swinging the sharp axe to take that tree down. So how does that relate to the catalytic converter functionality? Well, this is how I remember it. Like the lumberjack swinging the axe, the reduction section needs two things to separate the oxides of nitrogen into nitrogen and oxygen. We need a slightly rich mixture containing hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide to come in contact with two precious metals located inside the reduction section of that catalytic converter. Those precious metals being platinum and rhodium. When platinum and rhodium come in contact with a slightly rich mixture, some chemical reaction, or I could call magic, happens. And just like the lumberjack chopping the tree down, the chemical reaction between those precious metals and the rich mixture chemically disassociates the nitrogen from the oxygen. The nitrogen, being inert, goes right out the exit of the catalytic converter and out into the atmosphere, again, being a safe, inert gas for us to breathe. However, the oxygen is very important. We need that oxygen for the next chemical reaction that's going to take place on the back side of the catalytic converter. Again, take a look at this picture right here. Now, this picture represents a mall parking lot. And as you can see, there are quite a few vacant parking spaces. 
For a moment, I want you to picture those parking spaces not available to house a vehicle, but instead oxygen molecules. Those oxygen molecules are going to come in contact with two different precious metals located in the back section of the cat. The section is known as the oxidation section. So when a slightly lean mixture, abundant in oxygen, comes in contact with platinum and palladium, more magic happens. That's right, the hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide, two poisonous gases that were required during the chemical reaction process to disassociate the oxides of nitrogen into nitrogen and oxygen, we now have to take care of those gases because those two are dangerous. So when the hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide come in contact, chemically reacts with the platinum and palladium to once again chemically convert hydrocarbons into water and carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. So now that we understand the operation of the catalytic converter, how is this going to help us diagnose vehicles? Well, I will tell you this. The job of the catalytic converter is to do two things. It's to store oxygen and use oxygen. Store it and use it. Fill its belly with oxygen and then use that oxygen for chemical reactions. If you think about this, if that oxygen is used up in the chemical reaction process, how much net oxygen should leave the catalytic converter? I'll give you a second to think that over. Very little. Very, very little. Meaning, any oxygen that the catalyst stores in its belly should be used up in that chemical reaction process. And with that being said, we can use our rear oxygen sensor output to help indicate if any oxygen content is leaving the catalytic converter. And if so, how swiftly that process occurs. Today, I'm going to be using the Bosch ADS-525X scan tool. We are simply going to be looking at global OBD2 generic data in graphical format. We are going to plot both the front oxygen sensor and the rear oxygen sensor signal outputs in graphical format, comparing one to the other. I call that action-reaction testing. The purpose of that is to indicate the catalytic converter's functionality. That's right. We can look at this graph data to infer whether or not the catalyst is doing its job of storing oxygen and using oxygen. Currently, there are two different types of catalytic converter functionality monitors that run today, one of which is known as switched index ratio, and the other OSC, or oxygen storage capacity. Both of these tests will infer the catalytic converter's functionality, but they do so differently. Once again, take a look at this drawing right here. This drawing represents the functionality of the primary or front oxygen sensor, the one that is ahead of the catalytic converter. The one back here represents that of the rear oxygen sensor or post-catalyst sensor. As you can see in this known good drawing, this represents the catalytic converter functioning properly, meaning due to the stability of the rear oxygen sensor, there is no major variation in oxygen output from this catalytic converter. This combination of sensor signals from this next drawing indicate a catalyst that is not functioning properly. And if you look at the switched index ratio of the rear oxygen sensor frequency compared to the front oxygen sensor frequency, they have become very similar. And once we cross a switched index ratio of approximately 70%, that is when the ECM and or PCM condemns that catalytic converter for poor functionality. Now, I want you to take a look at this next form of catalytic converter functionality monitor. Again, right here. This represents what we know as oxygen storage capacity. And what we see here, when the primary sensor swings low, it indicates a lean condition. But in this known good capture, you can see this delay right here indicating that oxygen does leave the catalyst, but it does so after an extended period of time. This indicates good storage capacity. Now take a look at this picture right here. This picture represents a catalytic converter that is not functioning properly. And as you can see, when the primary sensor swings low to indicate a lean condition, 
Only moments later, the rear oxygen sensor indicates the same thing. So what does that all mean to us? That means we can look at the oxygen sensors to determine if the vehicle's catalytic converter is doing its job properly, meaning it stores oxygen and use oxygen. Let's head over to the vehicle. After the vehicle has been warmed up, the catalytic converter has lit off and has become functional. And let's monitor that same data on this vehicle here. So we're gonna go to data stream, which would be mode one of our OBD2 global scan tool service. We're gonna filter data because the Boss ADS 525X will allow us to customize our PID list and make the refresh rate of our scan tool faster and more accurate. I always advise you to do that whenever possible. Although this is a two bank fuel injection system, meaning bank one, bank two, just for demonstration purposes, to make it easier on the eyes, we are simply gonna analyze one bank. So we wanna see primary oxygen sensor and post cat oxygen sensor. Now we are going to expand our data. There's our two customized PIDs. And we're gonna let it fill up our screen. So we are viewing my Bosch ADS 525X. I'm going to select save reports and I'm going to pull up the data I captured from the work bay. So this scan tool arranges the save data in a folder for us and we can play back the movie which makes it really convenient. So I'm going to expand my data and what you'll see here is I am going to be using my finger to drag the toolbar back and forth. Something I want to point out first and foremost, let me pause this, is that you'll notice down here is showing 270 millivolts and up here is 92. This scan tool will automatically auto scale. It'll totally fill this screen to make it more visible for you. So I'm purposely going to fast forward and I want to show you, watch this scaling. It's going to change. Keep watching. As soon as my vertical line goes off the screen, you'll see what I mean. Right about now, do you see how it rescaled? So keep in mind the numbers, not so much the fact that it appears to have dropped. It didn't drop. It's just that the scaling had changed. I'll go back a little bit and then forth again. So it's the scaling that's changing. So I want you to keep that in mind. That's not what we're looking at. What you and I are looking at is the comparison of primary or front oxygen sensor activity compared to post or secondary oxygen sensor activity. And this indicates switched index ratio. So as I carry through, you see my engine RPM, you can't tell it's elevated, but you can tell by the frequency of this front sensor that my engine RPM is elevated. But take a look at this back sensor signal. As this continues to cycle low and high, low and high, low and high, our oxygen sensor in the rear, the signal is relatively stable, indicating not a lot of oxygen is leaving the catalytic converter. And this is really good because this indicates good switch index ratio, meaning the catalyst is doing its job. So again, this is what good switch index ratio looks like. So now we're gonna do something a little bit different. What I have to do is allow the catalyst to function normally. And then I'm gonna put a heavy load on it. What I mean by that is this, I'm going to force it to expel all of its oxygen contents by forcing it rich and forcing it lean. By forcing it lean, I'm then going to allow it to ingest oxygen and, and fill its belly, so to speak. So once again, we are gonna be looking for the rear oxygen sensor signal to reflect when oxygen has, has punched its way through the cat and, and made it out the tailpipe or otherwise past the rear O2 sensor. So we're gonna go back to the shop and I'm gonna show you how I do that. To run the oxygen storage capacity test, I'm going to simulate a lean condition. With the engine running, I will remove the brake booster hose and keep my finger carefully covering the check valve. I will slowly introduce a vacuum leak so now we are going to view oxygen storage capacity. We're going to view oxygen storage capacity through the eyes of the primary and secondary oxygen sensors. And so we are going to launch this data. 
And again, what I want to mention to you is we have to mind. Let me pause this. We have to mind the range of the graph. In other words, 0.82 to 0.9. This is pretty much way, way, way up high. Even though it spans the entire vertical length of the screen here uh, of the graph, um, we do have to pay mind to the actual numbers because, again, it auto scales. So this is what I'm talking about right here. 0.82 to 0.9, so auto scaling. So now we're going to make our way through the video. And you'll watch, the once again, the primary oxygen sensor starts switching. Give it a second until I start elevating the engine speed. There we go. And then what happens is I am going to create a lean condition. You can see that indicated by the primary oxygen sensor toggling low. But keep your eye on the secondary oxygen sensor signal. It's still high. It's still high. It's still high. It's still high. And then out of nowhere, it drops. So I am going to line these two graphs up vertically so you can see the difference in time from here to here. This is where the primary oxygen sensor took a dive, indicating a lean condition. But the secondary oxygen sensor indicates a lack of oxygen for quite a long time, quite a long time, before that oxygen, what we call, punches through. So this indicates really good oxygen storage capacity, and this is what we should expect to see. I'm Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age magazine, and I hope I was able to clarify some things for you regarding catalytic converter functionality so you have some confidence when it comes to diagnosing. Take care and we'll see you next time on the next episode of The Trainer.